I S U P K. Hey, Salam, man. It's Priest Kevin Condoha with the I S U P K. And the Commander Johnny Hanna in California, man. It's like all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You gotta learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Salam. All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I was in danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Pray to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I ever wanted was to be a gangster Little did I know I was in danger Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Pray to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I wanted was to be a gangster And shot call To be known with them niggas letting shots off Either that or the right hand to the top door Funny how we see vanity and not the lives lost Can't be focused on a life that's hopeless Out there pumping, not knowing the Lord will kill you for that hocus pocus Used to roll with niggas that cook dope with weaponry Same ones claim they love you, I had your life in jeopardy And I know my mother won't success for me But that G should take a girl straight to ecstasy Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Whosoever committed sin also tra uh, uh, transgresses the law. Continue. For sin is the transgression of the law. Do you got it? For sin is also the transgression of the law. That is what your sin is, man. And your sin, you asking for death to come into your life, man. When you decide to smoke a cigarette, you asking to die. When you decide to harm another brother, you're asking to die. When you decide to love your enemy, you're asking to die, black man. When our so-called black leaders tell you to just forgive after your brother was just taken from you and hug some unrighteous judge or hug the murderer of your, of, of your child or of your loved one, you understand you decided to mix and mingle and forgive your oppressor. Do you understand? You're asking for death to continue to happen over and over and over and over again. The Christian church has allowed us to believe a false definition of forgiveness. We want him to sit here and to forgive our oppressors for taking my brother away from me, for taking my mother away from me, for pushing drugs into my neighborhood that's going to kill my people. And we turn around and want to forgive them. Our sin is the transgression of the law. So in God, we don't understand. The Christian church don't tell us this. You understand? Jay-Z, Kanye West, they don't tell us this. They don't tell you that God is going to punish you. God, they don't tell you that God is going to punish you, black man, because he's a father. We have forgotten the definition of a father. Any father out here who's right is going to sit here and discipline their child. But because of Christian church and America's culture, we've forgotten what a strong father would do. And God is going to discipline his children. God is going to repay you for you transgressing his law. Because the law is meant to protect you from death. So when, so when you do that sin, you're asking to die. When your child does something that's against what you told him to do, your child is asking to be disciplined. You understand? So we be looking crazy and not understanding that God is the one that does all this. Do you understand? Drop that for a second. Give me uh, Romans chapter 6 verse 23. And behold that, all right? You understand? We're not understanding this because of the Christian church. We're not understanding that we've been beat and slaughtered and murdered and raped and molested and everything you can name and every word in the book. And then we got nerve to turn around and forgive them. We got nerve to turn around and say, I love them. I love everybody. We always up here every Friday and around the world talking about what love is and how love is according to the Bible. And everybody all say, y'all always preaching hate. Y'all always preaching hate. Y'all need to love. Y'all telling us to love when we loving our brothers and our sisters. How about you tell the ones that's not loving us, that's murdering us every single day? Why don't you go bring John 3.16 to them? Do you understand? Because we teaching our brothers and our sisters not to transgress the law. Because if you transgress the law, the law is meant to protect you and protect your babies and protect your loved ones. These laws right here, America's laws is meant to protect them. Do you understand? These laws which are way more honorable way more respected and should be respected by black Hispanics and Hispanics. We follow these laws, we'll be protected. But if you sin against this law, if you decide to harm your brother, if you decide to sell them drugs that they put it, that our oppressor put in our neighborhoods, and you decide to sell it to your own child, or to your own mother, or to your own father, 
you are transgressing the law and you're asking to die. And, and our oppressor in America has beaten us to a pulp to the point where we rather die. Where we would rather die. How do I know that's true? Because you go tell a brother or sister, hey yo, you know you're not supposed to be smoking that cigarette, man. What are you doing out here in the corner? He gonna say what? We done, any brother out here done heard this answer plenty of times. That young man or that old brother, that old soul, that young soul is gonna tell you we all gonna die someday. We all gonna die someday. That's how I know that we accept death more than we wanna live. Because we've been beaten and we've been killed so much to where death seems so natural to black people. Death seems so natural. A funeral seems so natural and common that we've welcomed it and we've accepted it into our lives. Do you understand? For a young brother or a young sister to turn around, or even an elder, to turn around and tell you we all gonna die someday. It's not about that we gonna die someday, it's about how you die. It's about what you leave behind. And right now, we're not given a chance to leave nothing behind for our youth. You understand? You got that? Romans chapter six, verse 23. Do you understand? He understand that when you decide to sin, he understand you're gonna get paid for your sin. You understand, you decide to get, you decide to go and gang bang. How do nine out of 10 brothers and sisters that gang bang die? Doing gang bang stuff. How do you, if you decide to join the white man's a drug game, how do you die? By the white man's drug game. And the white man is devious. He's done a number of black that is in the Spanish. After he beat us and tortured us, he found that one or two, or that one Christian pastor, or that one rapper, and he said, look, I'm gonna pay you this. I'm gonna make sure you eat good. All you gotta do is push this type of message. All you gotta do is say, forgive that white man for taking your child away from you, and I'll make sure you eat good. And you thought he made you believe through that crafty counsel that you was about to make a come up. He made you believe that, you know what I'm saying, that you about to live good. And then he, not only that, not even just a come up, that black man or black sister is also in a position where they have children to feed too. So they're like, man, I ain't got no other choice. I gotta do this. I know it's wrong. I know it's a sin, but I gotta do this. And then what happened? You thought you was about to make a come up and then boom, you got caught up too. Or even a brother or sister that never got caught before in the white man's drug business or never got done wrong supposedly in loving their, uh, loving their oppressor. What about the other brothers and sisters that got caught and got killed? because they did not know their oppressor. They did not know that they had an enemy. What about them? It's selfishness, man. And we've chosen selfishness over brotherhood. You got that? Romans 6 and 23. This is the book of Romans, uh -huh. chapter 6, verse 23. Right. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of you deciding to do unrighteousness is only death. And sin we just brought out in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. We just brought out that sin is the transgression of the law. You understand when you give a rule as a parent in your household and your child decides to go against that rule, you transgressed against whatever your parent told you not to do. You went against what your parent just told you not to do. So, so be it. Now you are asking for this punishment. When we decide to sin, we are asking for death because these laws are going to protect you. I couldn't shout it enough. We out here prophesying unto the one because I want all and each and every one of my brothers and sisters to understand that. Your life does matter and your life ain't just your life. It does start with you as one black man because that's gonna lead to the people you know that I may not know. That's gonna lead to your household, that's gonna lead to the next household, eventually the whole neighborhood, eventually all the Northeast, eventually all the Southeast, eventually it'll get to everybody. But it do start with you. And if all you believe in is that we are gonna die one day, you saying that you woke them in death. You saying that you want the wages of sin, read it again. Verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. What's your wages? What it is you get paid for? So you asking for this, you gonna get paid for this. We all grew up on it and the scriptures say it. Treat your brother how you wanna be treated. Love your brother as thyself. So if you wouldn't want your mother stuck off the drugs, don't sell drugs to your brother, to your man's, or to some other black man's mother. If you wouldn't want to see your child being a homosexual, don't push an agenda that America wants you to push of letting your child be a homosexual. Tell your little boy that he is a boy. Tell your little girl that she is a girl. Do you understand? We are confusing our children because why? Because this image right here has allowed us to welcome 
every tra uh, every transgression of the law. They push it on us. How do I know that? Everybody on this sign right here, as you see, are the only groups of people that's ever been targeted. Only, only groups of people that are called so-called drug lords. Are the only group of people that are so-called murderers and gangsters and thugs. Well, if anybody knows that America and our oppressor are the biggest drug lords, are the, right. so, are the real gangsters. That's right. You think you gangster? You think that you making a quick dollar compared to their dollar, brother, wake up. We deciding to choose death over living. Who does that? And what made us do that? Hold that, give me Isaiah 9 and 16. Do you understand? Who does that? How have we been pushed into doing that? Where is our common sense to tell us now, nah, brother? Nah, sister, look, you can sit here and square up with me all day you want, but I'm not letting you sell that to my child, and I'm not letting you smoke that, because I give a damn about you. Because you are a black man like me. I don't care if that's your daughter or not. Go to that brother and say, hey, look, that sister got put some clothes on, man. You know it's terrible out here. But we've been beaten so much and accepted, and, and accepted sin so much that we don't feel, we don't see reality as it is. We don't see that our children are disappearing by the numbers every single day. But yet we like if we let our child walk 15 feet away from me. Nah, not me. My child is staying right next to my side because I know the kingdom that I walk in. And this kingdom is wicked. You got that scripture? Isaiah 9 and 16. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 16. For the leaders of this people causes them to err. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. Now who are your so-called uh, 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 leaders? Everybody here got their favorite leader. Kanye West this, Jay-Z this, Al Sharpton this, T.D. Jakes this. Our so-called leaders have caused us to err. How they cause us to err? Because they don't tell you that you gotta change. Christianity does not require change. Being Muslim does not require a black man to change. Following the truth of this Bible requires black men and black women, man, woman, and child to change. Do you understand? It's a requirement. You good. Do you understand? It's a requirement that you change. But Christianity does just tell you to welcome death into your household. How do I know that the Christian church does that? Because look at how any devil can walk up in there, spray the whole church up. You've allowed that oppressor in there. None of those brothers and sisters were ready for what was coming because the leaders of this people have caused them to end. The leaders of this people have caused them to love sin and to hate righteousness because we feel like we got to feed our own mouths. We feel like we got to get our come up on our own. I got to feed my children. I got to make sure my bills paid. There's going to come a day where a black man will never have to pay bills and work three jobs a day. That day is going to come. But for that day to come, we have to not want the wages of sin, which is death. We have to want the wages of righteousness. We have to want the kingdom at hand. We have to want to save another brother or sister. We have to want to not have to be homeless again, to not have to starve again. The brother brought it out earlier about the curses, and we're going to go into that too. The brother brought out the curses and what we would go through. And them curses, I know, the, I know the white man and your Christian pastor say curse and it sound real spooky. It sound real scientific or whatever it is you want to use. Curses is a punishment. That's all it is. Do you understand? And we would go through them punishments because we have rather to be, we have rather to sin and to, try, and, and, and to do wickedness to the Lord and to our people than to do what's right. Read that from the top one more time. Look at what I said. Chapter 8. Chapter 9, verse 16. Right. For the leaders of this people caused them to err. Go ahead. And they that are led of them are destroyed. You understand what I'm saying? And if your leaders are committing sin, and you are led of them that's committing sin, you are asking death. You are asking for the payment of death. You are asking to lose your child. You are asking to lose your brother. You are asking to lose your mother, your father, your wife. You're asking to lose everything you own because we would rather listen to these wicked behind leaders that don't give a damn about black people. These men that you see before you today, we give a damn about you. I don't have to know you. I don't have to know your name. I don't have to, I don't have to like your style. I don't have to do none of that, but I know you're a black man just like me. So for that, I'm going to sit here and tell you what transgressing the law means. Drop that. Give me, um, one second. Give me, uh, Proverbs 14 to 12. You understand? Because we think we know what's right, and I understand that that's a sin against the Lord. We understand, but here's the understand, the rest of the laws. 
Do you understand? Here's to understand all the answer. I know we may not know it all, but as long as you understand two things. Loving the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything in you. You understand what I'm saying? And to love your brother as yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Because if you love your brother as yourself, the rest of the law will be taken care of. If you love your brother, you won't let him get high. If he loves you, he won't let you get high. If you love your brother, you'll tell him that that's not your people. You are not African. You're not supposed to be Christian. These are your people, right here. If you love your brother, you would tell him that and vice versa. He would tell you this. Do you understand? But go ahead. This is the problem that we had with these wicked behind leaders. This is the problem that we had in accepting sin and accepting losing our loved ones and accepting more blood every single day. Every single day. I tell you, we fill the ground with blood more than the trees that you see before you, more than the concrete that you see before you, more than crap, more than the cars that drive on this very land of my of the bones and blood of my Native American Indian brothers and, and the black and the black natives and Hispanics that were that were slaughtered on this land. Our blood floods the world more than anything that you see thinks takes up a big part of it. All them acres, everything. You got that scripture? Uh, 14 to 12. 14 to 12. You good, you good, take your time. You understand what I'm saying? We think we know what's best. How we gonna know what's best? And we not being taught what's best. How that make sense? Imagine your child who don't know nothing, and he telling you, I know what's best. You ain't been taught what's best yet, son. Listen up, let me learn you something before you think you know what it is. Go ahead. This is the book of Proverbs. Chapter 14, verse 12. Let's go. There is a there is a way which seems right unto man. Do you understand? There's a way which seems right unto man. You think you're doing what's right. You think no, you know no, what's no, best. No, no, you think what you saying. know that's what's what right. Saying. Go ahead. That's done. not Go ahead. what he's saying. Go ahead. But you the end, therefore, are wrong. the way of death. But in for no, and your no, ways no, of thinking no, you know no, what's no, right no. and you know what's best. Read that again, the second part. But the end, therefore, are the ways of death. But in for the ways that you think you know is best are death. You think selling drugs so you can eat good is best? In for the ways are death. You think your sin and transgressing the law is what's best? You think the law is done away with? You're welcoming Satan into your house. You're welcoming the devil into, into your house. You welcome in that evil spirit into your house. You welcome in this evil image into your house. You wearing that cross. Do you understand? You going to Sunday service. You going to the synagogue, to the Muslim synagogue. You think you, whatever it is, you think that you know is right. But in the end of it comes what? Do that second part again. But the end, therefore, are the ways of death. So even though you think you know what's right, in the ends of it is death. You think that you can eat whatever you want, next thing you know, you're in the hospital over and over and over and over again. You think Sally, we've been slaughtered so much. After all of that, we still think Sally is different from the rest of them. How much more death? How much more? It gotta be your child that gotta be taken from you. It gotta be your brother that's taken from you. Before you understand that black man, we don't know nothing. And the only way to know something, and this is me being honest, you gotta grab a flyer. You gotta grab a fire. This entire time we got no choice but to be honest. Cause right now we follow what we wanna do. And when we do what we wanna do, it's death. How do I know this? Read the news. You ain't even gotta look at the news no more, turn on your TV. The scene, the tape is right outside of your door. The scene, the chalk, the yellow tape is right outside of your door. It is so much that we are slaughtered that you don't even have to turn on the news no more. Because it's right there, your best friend, your best friend, it, something happened to them. Some devil shot them. Some devil broke in their house. Like Tatiana Jefferson, sir. Tatiana. Our Tatiana, Salakia. Our Tatiana. Do you understand? Like both them, John. Like every one of our family members. You don't even have to turn on the news no more. Do you understand? Read that again. There is a way which seems right unto a man. But the end, therefore, are the ways of death. So in other words, black man, I'm not saying you don't have no wisdom and I'm not taking away that you do not want to protect your household. But what I'm telling you is, there's a better way to do it. There's a better way for a black man not only to protect their household, but to protect Auntie Sandra's household, to protect Cousin Baca, uh, uh, Shaniqua's household. There's a way to protect your entire household 
household. Your entire neighborhoods is a way to protect them. You understand what I'm saying? I know you got that pistol, I know you got your way of protection, but there's a way that's better. And the way that's better is following these laws, statute commandments. The way that's better is not transgressing the law. The way that's better, the way to get your child out of them cages, my Hispanic brothers and sisters, my brothers that's in them, that's in them cages, the way to do that is to not transgress the law. Return back to our culture and leave out of her. Flee from America. Be understanding their culture. We could drop that. We could drop that. Let me get first Corinthians 14 and 33. You understand what I'm saying? You want to say You lying. There is color when you're talking about Jesus Christ. You are a liar. My whole life was trying to find something to follow. Hand loyalty, every man tried to borrow. Felt pain. And a lot of sorrow got betrayed, so packed, I didn't even have my heart broke. Living confused, about to lose hope. Cops got me on the side of the road, like a sideshow. Need an antidote before I croak. Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues, call this guitar smoke. Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction. The world got me vexed. Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression. Felt like my life was on fire, trying to find an exit. Now look, 10 G. Plus a good wreck. Sometimes a follower is a soldier trying to find a good ship. Plus, when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom, the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale. Listen well to what I tell. No calling can cause pain. Something that a rebel knows very well. Can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.